For over a century, we've assumed we understood the structure of the atomic nucleus. But what if I told you we'd been wrong? That the evidence, the very experiments physicists rely on, actually contradicts the models we use. At the heart of nuclear physics, we've made several fundamental assumptions. Assumptions that shape how we interpret experiments and build our models. For example, we assume that the nucleus is just a cluster of protons and neutrons, packed together like marbles in a bag. We assume that charge is evenly distributed with protons contributing a smooth electric field inside the atom. Each of these ideas has shaped the way we interpret experimental results. But what if these assumptions aren't true? What if the nucleus isn't a simple ball of particles, but instead has an internal structure? What if charge is not evenly spread, but instead forms a complex distribution? In this video, we're going to examine four key anomalies four pieces of evidence that challenge these long-standing assumptions about nuclear structure. By the end of this, we may find that nuclear physics isn't quite as subtle as we've been led to believe. And if we step back and reframe the data, we may uncover something unexpected, a structured nucleus with a more complex charge distribution than we ever imagined. The proton is one of the most fundamental building blocks of matter, yet its exact size remains an open question. Traditionally, its charge radius has been measured using two methods, electron scattering and spectroscopy of hydrogen atoms. Both methods originally provided a consistent value, around 0.88 femtometers. But in 2010, a new type of measurement using muonic hydrogen, where a muon replaces the electron in the hydrogen atom, gave a result nearly 4% smaller, around 0.84 femtometers. At first, this seems like an experimental anomaly but repeated measurements confirmed the discrepancy. This raised serious questions. Had previous measurements overestimated the proton size? Was the muonic hydrogen result revealing some new physics? Or was something missing in our understanding of how charge is distributed inside the proton? Then, in 2019, new experiments using normal hydrogen spectroscopy also found a smaller proton radius, around 0.84 femtometers, matching the muonic hydrogen result. This discovery meant that the discrepancy could no longer be dismissed as an issue exclusive to muonic hydrogen. Instead, it suggested that the older electron scattering measurements may have systematically overestimated the proton size. The issue became known as the proton radius puzzle, and despite improvements in experimental techniques, it has remained unresolved. If the discrepancy was simply due to measurement error, we would expect it to be resolved over time. But this hasn't happened. Instead, different methods continue to give conflicting results, forcing physicists to reconsider fundamental aspects of proton structure. One possibility is that the proton's charge distribution is not uniform. Standard models assume that a proton is a sphere of positive charge, but if the charge is concentrated in certain regions or follows a structured pattern, different measurement techniques might probe different aspects of this structure, leading to varying results. Another possibility is that interactions between the muon and the proton reveal subtle effects that aren't present in electron-based measurements. Muons are much heavier than electrons, meaning they orbit much closer to the proton in muonic hydrogen. This makes them far more sensitive to the proton's internal charge distribution. If the proton's charge is not smoothly spread, but has internal variations, a muon might experience a different effective charge radius than an electron would. This suggests that our assumption about the proton itself may need revisiting. If the proton radius puzzle suggests that charge is not evenly distributed inside the proton, then what happens when we look at entire atomic nuclei? The assumption has long been that as you add protons and neutrons, the nucleus expands in predictable ways. But experimental measurements of charge radii, the effective size of the nucleus based on how charge is distributed, have revealed inconsistencies that the standard model struggles to explain. The simplest expectation is that charge radius should scale smoothly with atomic number. A common estimate uses the formula R equals R0 times the cube root of A, where R0 is a scaling factor and A is the total number of nucleons. This assumes that nuclei behave like a roughly uniform sphere of nucleons, meaning their size grows in a predictable way as more protons and neutrons are added. However, this is not what we observe. When charge radii are measured experimentally, a curious trend emerges. Most elements have a smaller charge radius than theoretical models predict. 
with two notable exceptions, lithium and beryllium, which appear larger than expected. Looking at the charge radius data across the periodic table, we see a clear pattern. The measured charge radius is generally smaller than the predicted value, and this discrepancy increases as proton number increases. If standard nuclear physics were correct in assuming that nuclear charge is evenly distributed, this trend should not exist. The standard model attempts to explain these deviations primarily through two mechanisms, neutron-proton interactions and quantum shell effects. The first explanation suggests that neutrons influence proton charge distribution in a way that reduces the overall size of the nucleus. This occurs because additional neutrons alter the overall nuclear force landscape, increasing the attractive strong interactions between nucleons. This increased binding energy effectively pulls the protons closer together, leading to a reduction in the measured charge radius. However, when we examine the data, we see a dramatic increase in neutron number with very little impact on the trend in charge radius. If neutron-proton interactions were the dominant factor, we would expect to see some correlation between neutron number and charge radius changes. But this is not observed. Similarly, the quantum shell model proposes that sudden shifts in charge radius should occur around magic and doubly magic numbers, where nucleons are thought to arrange into closed shells that impact nuclear structure. However, the data does not display such abrupt transitions, suggesting that these effects alone do not fully explain the observed trends. While the element-wide trend shows a general contraction of charge radii, a different and more complex pattern emerges when we examine isotopes of individual elements. Unlike the relatively smooth trend seen across elements, the isotopic data presents non-linear fluctuations in charge radius that challenge conventional explanations. For example, in helium isotopes we see a stark deviation. Helium-3 has a charge radius of 1.966 femtometers, while helium-4 is significantly smaller at 1.675 femtometers despite the addition of only one neutron. However, adding two more neutrons to form helium-6 leads to an expansion back to 2.066 femtometers, and helium-8 follows at 1.923 femtometers. Such inconsistencies are difficult to reconcile under the assumption that neutrons merely act as neutral binders that distribute charge smoothly. Similar fluctuations appear in other isotopes, with charge radii increasing in some cases and decreasing in others. This suggests that neutron additions do not simply expand the nucleus, but instead trigger reconfigurations that alter charge distribution. The structured atom model offers an alternative explanation for these trends by proposing that nuclear structure is not a uniform sphere, but rather a geometrically organized framework of protons and electrons. In this model, additional neutrons are interpreted as proton-electron pairs that integrate into the nucleus at specific sites. These additions can reinforce existing charge structure or destabilize them, leading to non-linear changes in charge radius. Some proton-electron pairs may attach at unstable positions, temporarily expanding the charge distribution before the structure stabilizes into a more compact form. This Instability could also explain why certain isotopes are unstable and undergo decay, as the nucleus seeks a more energetically favourable configuration. Electron scattering experiments assume a uniform positive nucleus, but SAM suggests that charge is distributed in localised variations, leading to misleading interpretations of nuclear compactness. One possibility is that the interaction of the electron's negative field with the proton's field creates areas where charge appears more concentrated. This effect could lead to the deflections that suggest a smaller charge radius than actually exists. Rather than the nucleus being physically smaller, the measurement process itself could be amplifying specific regions of charge density, leading to an overestimation of nuclear compactness. Thus, the observed charge radius data may not be a direct measurement of nucleus size, but rather a reflection of how charge is distributed and how electrons interact with these charge variations. If the standard model assumes a uniform charge distribution, but SAM predicts a structured charge field, then experimental results may be biased towards interpreting nuclear interactions as occurring within a more confined space than they truly are. 
This perspective suggests the need to rethink how we interpret charge radius data and consider that the trends observed may be revealing something more fundamental about the nature of the nuclear charge distribution. If nuclear structure plays a dominant role in charge radius measurements, then electron scattering experiments are not simply measuring nuclear size, but rather how charge is arranged inside the nucleus. This suggests that standard models may be systematically misinterpreting charge radius data, that charge deviations are driven by nuclear structure rather than just neutron count, and that SAM provides a more natural explanation for charge radius trends than conventional nuclear physics. Ultimately, what we call the charge radius is not a fixed physical boundary, but rather an artefact of how charge is structured within the nucleus. So far, we've seen three major anomalies. Each of these points towards the same conclusion. Nuclear charge is not a simple sum of protons, but something more structured and complex. But there's one more experimental result that might hold the key. Not in particle interactions, but in the structure of the nucleus itself. If charge distribution is not uniform, then nuclear shape should also reveal clues about an underlying structural pattern. Recent studies of doubly magic nuclei suggest just that, providing further evidence that nucleons do not arrange themselves randomly, but instead follow an inherent geometric order. In nuclear physics, the concept of magic numbers refers to specific numbers of protons and neutrons that result in highly stable nuclei. These numbers 2, 8, 20, 28, 50, 82 and 126 are thought to arise from shell-like structures within the nucleus, similar to how electron shells define the chemical properties of elements. When a nucleus has both a magic number of protons and a magic number of neutrons, it is termed doubly magic nucleus, a configuration associated with exceptional stability. A recent study published in Physical Review Letters investigated the structure of lead-208, the heaviest known doubly magic nucleus, with 82 protons and 126 neutrons, both magic numbers. This research is significant because, despite its classification as a stable, doubly magic nucleus, lead-208 exhibits deformation and collectivity challenging the traditional assumption that such nuclei should always be perfectly spherical. The findings from this study suggest that even nuclei considered to be rigidly spherical can exhibit deformation, hinting at an underlying spatial organisation rather than a purely statistical distribution of nucleons. In the standard nuclear shell model, magic numbers emerge because nucleons are thought to fill discrete energy levels, analogous to electron orbitals. However, while this model explains energy states, it does not provide a clear three-dimensional spatial arrangement of nucleons. This raises a critical question. If protons and neutrons are filling different shells, how do they coexist in a physical structure? In contrast, the structured atom model proposes that nucleons are arranged in defined geometric patterns, rather than existing as a statistical cloud. In SAM, the emergence of magic numbers is a natural consequence of nucleons minimizing energy by forming specific lattice-like configurations. Rather than being a uniform sphere, Lead 208 in SAM takes on an oblong, structured shape, with nucleons occupying distinct positions that reinforce nuclear stability. The images of Lead 208 generated under the SAM framework reveal a non spherical extended structure, consistent with the findings that suggest deformation even in doubly magic nuclei. The structured perspective challenges the assumption that magic number nuclei must always be spherical. Instead, it implies that nuclear stability arises not from an abstract quantum shell effect, but from how nucleons physically interlock within a defined framework. The confirmation of the doubly magic nature of lead-208, alongside its unexpected deformation, further challenges the traditional view of nucleons as a diffuse cloud. Instead, it sports the idea that nuclei form structured geometries, a principle central to SAM. If nucleons arrange themselves in organised, lattice-like configurations, this could explain why some isotopes are inherently stable, while others decay rapidly. The structure either reinforces itself or becomes unstable under excess strain. As research continues, findings like this push us closer to unravelling the true nature of nuclear structure. But the question now is, how far does this order extend? Are all stable nuclei following strict geometric rules? And if so, how might this reshape our understanding of nuclear physics? 
while conventional models attempt to describe stability through quantum states alone, the growing evidence of geometric nuclear structure suggests that we may need to rethink the fundamental nature of the atomic core. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like, and a massive thank you to all those who continue to support me on Patreon and other ways. Without your support, this channel simply would not be possible. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.